I think in five years you will begin to see the collapse of fiat. Do you do any kind of research before? Obviously. <laughs> the political campaign and you running for president, are you going to take any actions with it? Obviously. <laughs> I couldn't be, no one's going to let me president, please God. Do you have any assumption about the Bitcoin price? Obviously. <laughs> so while the price is going down, who cares? It's a temporary issue. I don't know when it's going to pop, but I can tell you, it's going to pop. Tell us the story of you getting into the crypto world. When was that? Why that was, was that? I got into it in 2011 uh, by peer pressure, my friends uh, and, and past employees. It literally forced me to read the Satoshi's white paper. And when I had done that, um, I, I saw immediately the, the beauty and the power of the mathematics. And I saw that this was potentially world changing. And it has turned out to be. Um, and I, I hope that the world changes in the appropriate direction because we're sort of at a cusp. It can go both ways. It can go either to uh, the side of totalitarianism or to the side of, of complete personal freedom. And I'm lobbying for the second option. How would that go with the first option, totalitarianism? Totalitarianism is that we, as a community, buy into the government's demands that they control cryptocurrency or that they make their own cryptocurrency and insist that that is the only one that we use, whereas they have no real power to stop us from doing what we want. My, my, my fear is that we will fall into the same old habit of being sheep, not wanting to be, you know, um, outlaws or, or revolutionaries, not wanting to take risk, and that we will accept what the governments propose. And then it's all over. And how can we prevent that? By understanding, by information, by education, by self-awareness. At three o'clock, this is what I will be talking about. You've got a big platform on Twitter. Uh, how many followers? Uh, 850,000. So you've decided to promote cryptocurrencies, right? Or well, I'm not that decided to promote. I, I tell people what I believe, what I'm doing, and what I, what I believe in. Uh, things like uh, the medical currencies, like Docademic. I mean, health is, is certainly everyone's primary concern when we're not healthy, right? It's a very important part of our lives. And to have um, products like Docademic's Cool Emotions, which even moves it into the area of psychology. Let's assume that a tragedy befalls us and we're about to jump off of a bridge. You have the option of pulling out your phone, they have applications that are working right now, pressing the button, saying cool emotions, and a psychologist appears. He says, what's your problem? I'm about to kill myself. Why don't you step down from the bridge and let's talk about it? That's power. It's free, for the first one at least. That will save so many lives, will it not? Or on the medical side, you fall down the stairs, you think you broke your arm, you push the other button, the doctor says, well, show me your arm. And he goes, no, you probably just sprained it. If it still hurts you tomorrow, if it spells up, go to a doctor. That's power. So when you, you should understand that with the plat platform as big as yours, you have a lot of influence yes. on price of any particular cryptocurrency, on people. Yeah. So my question is, do you do any kind of research before posting? Well, sure obviously, because these are the things that I'm interested in. Okay. These are the things that, that, that I wish to have my company uh, invest in themselves. So sure, of course I do. I don't go around just, you know, nearly really, you know, uh, posting things. I have, a, I have a preference for privacy coins. That's, a, that's just my personal preference. But there's a reason for it. Um, Many people do not know that if you use Bitcoin or Ethereum, let's say you and I have a transaction. Mm -hmm. I need your wallet address in order to send you. You receive my wallet address in the transaction. Mm -hmm. Forever after, I can look in your wallet and see how much money you have, where it goes, and what comes in. Now, if people would look into your bank account the same way, you would not be happy. And yet this is the reality. With privacy coins, that, that's not possible. No one can look in. You and I can have a transaction. The only thing you know is that you did receive the Bitcoin or you did receive the cryptocurrency and that I did send it. And that's all we need to know. So obviously, 
I would like a world a little more private than what we have now in crypto. So yeah, so they say, why are you promoting privacy coins? Well, you would too if you truly understood the problem with the, with the current coins. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I know about everything because everybody comes to me with their proposals, with their suggestions, and when I get 500 people in a few days recommending that I look at something, well, I'll look at it. You know, do an analysis, and if I like it, I'll talk about it. And how do you do an, an analysis? Well, in, my company has a, an audit division uh, that actually audits companies. You know, we look at the website, look at the founders, we check out the founders to make sure they're valid, um, that they are who they say they are, that they haven't been in legal problems, that they haven't scammed people before. We look at their, their project, their product, and say, is it a good one? Is it even doable? If it's doable, can these people do it? So we do a full audit. You've, um, you've had a thread on Twitter about hit the exchange hit the DC. Can you elaborate on what... what well, I, again, when, when a large number of people are all saying the same thing, and they, they will say it to me, obviously, uh, because my people that, that read the tweets or read the DMs and, and, and emails, you know, listen and, and come to me. If we get 2,000 people complaining about the same company, then suddenly we start checking it out. Because you can complain about somebody, but it could be groundless. So we, we select a few, we write them back and say, send us your ether scans. Can you give us proof? And yes, they've been stealing. Or not outright stealing, but stealing in very subtle ways. Keeping your money for six months? What are they doing with it during that time? Um, charging you exorbitant fees to get your money back. Um, so, so no, they're, they're not a good company. I'm sorry. But did somebody from HBDC try to contact him to... No, of course not. No. no, that's typical of companies that are scamming people. Because if they contact me, I'm going to say, hey, look at this. Explain it. Well, they don't want to explain it. Are you going to take any actions with it? I, you know, I, 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 listen, I think they've lost so much business. Um, that uh, they will just disappear on their own. Okay. Is there any other exchange that we need to look up to or be careful about? <laughs> <laughs> do you receive? You, you, you say you receive complaints. We do. We do. Uh, until until we can absolutely be sure. verify the validity of complaints, I don't, I don't want to say anything. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, where do you stand on centralized versus decentralized exchanges? <laughs> decentralized, obviously, because we have to have them in order to totally free ourselves from potential government control. Right now, a government can shut down any centralized exchange by pulling the electricity, arresting the employees, setting fire to the building, busting up the computer, what anything they want. With decentralized exchanges, no one can do anything. What do you do when 10 million people are all participating in this exchange, not even aware that it's happening, it's in the background on their uh, on their smartphones or their laptops mm -hmm. or their desktops, you cannot shut that down. And then we will have ultimate power. So the political campaign and you running for president at yes. 2020, uh, is this happening? Are you yes, of course. I, no, I ran in 2016 and it happened, okay? Um, I ran on the libertarian platform as a libertarian. Uh, this time I, I think I'll win it, but it doesn't even matter. The last time I still got the national stage, mm -hmm. I was on the national debates for the Libertarian Party, and I got to say what I wanted to say. And last time I was talking about lapses in cybersecurity. This time I, I want to talk about personal freedom and how cryptocurrency can, can help us achieve that. So that was my next question, whether you're going to bring the cryptocurrency in your uh, pre-campaign, are you going to talk about it? Is this That's all I'm going to talk about. See, I don't want to be president. I couldn't be, but no one's going to elect me president, please God. Um, however, I've got the right to run if I have enough support, and I definitely have enough support. So you're going to use the, the exposure that you have to talk about cryptocurrency? Yes, that, that I will legally have access to the national stage. Okay. I had enough support last time. I've got even more support this time, so I will have access to that stage. So you'll be talking to, uh, about cryptocurrency as, as, as money or as a way of freedom? Or as a way of freedom. Only privacy coins or? No, no it, it has nothing to do with privacy versus non-privacy. It has to do with the concept of us taking control of the financial systems that we, that we live with. 
Right now we have none. The, the, our, our financial systems are controlled by governments, the Fed, um, people in power. And they get to choose how much money is in circulation at any time. They get to change interest rates. They can deflate or inflate. We're not free. If we have a permissionless transaction, government's not involved. Do you think it will happen? Because we've been saying that since the invention of Bitcoin. Well, that's because you're young and, and you're, you're anxious and you want things to happen immediately. So we're talking about the long term? Yeah, I think in, I think in five years' time, fiat will be on its last legs. Five it will years. disappear in five but years. it's pretty short time. It's not because it's been happening for 15 years, all right? Um, that's, okay. okay. Or it's been happening for 10 years already. No, it's not a, it's not a long time. Uh, not even uh, not a short time. I think in five years, you will begin to see the collapse of fiat. Mm -hmm. Collapse meaning we're going to we're not we're not using it anymore. Colla collapse. For example, when the demand for a currency disappears, the currency disappears. I mean, the, the the currency's value goes from whatever it is to zero. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by collapse. So we've recently celebrated the 10 years of Bitcoin. The Bitcoin, right. Um, what would you say about the state of the industry? Are you happy with where it's going? Because it's been 10 years already. Well, you know, when you say the industry, that's, that's a very broad statement. The again. Bitcoin industry. Is the Bitcoin an industry? See, people are always thinking that there is a Bitcoin incorporated. Or, you know, no, I know what you're talking about. Okay, number one, I don't think that Bitcoin will be the number one player in the field of cryptocurrency. Number one, it's not private. When people understand that it's not, they will start to migrate. Um, number two, it's not a Bitcoin industry, and it's not, it, it's a cryptocurrency industry, of which Bitcoin is simply a moving part. What do exchanges do? They have Bitcoin, and you exchange it for Ethereum, and which you exchange for Litecoin, which you might exchange for Monero. It's simply one cog in a very massive wheel, which is dependent upon all the other cryptocurrencies. So as this becomes more and more apparent, Bitcoin, as the name for what we're doing, will simply be one of the coins in the crypto industry. That was my question, actually, because back then it was called the Bitcoin industry. That's right, right. It but, but it's really the crypto industry. That's but the more proper term. Yeah, you've mentioned um, that it's not going to be the first one. Are you talking about any particular cryptocurrency in the market? Or just we, can't, we can't predict that. Here. Something may crop up six months from now, which is the end all to end all. So we go, that's it. That's what we're all looking for. But it doesn't have to be one. There doesn't have to be one currency. There can be a thousand cryptocurrencies that we all use in exchange. And why? Because some people prefer this over that speed of transactions. Some people prefer low transaction costs. Um, some people will prefer the functional features of things like Docademic, where I've got the coins and maybe I'm trading them, but gee, I think I broke my arm and I'm going to put a couple in the slot and call a doctor, right? So, uh, and many of us may use a dozen or more, or all of them. Wallets in the future will support every currency, I believe. And so we don't have to think or worry about, oh my God, this versus that. You know, and the wallet will have the intelligence to go, oh, I'm, I, I'd like to buy some ice cream. And they'll go, you know what, the best coin for buying ice cream is the ice cream coin, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it will do the exchanges for you, and, and you will be completely oblivious. All you'll know is you have a crypto wallet, and it makes all your decisions for you. First of all, how do you make your assumption about the price? And the second one, do you have any assumption about the Bitcoin price yet? The Bitcoin? Yeah. I, you know, I, may, I have definitely made an assumption about the Bitcoin price. So how uh, do you make a decision on well, the price? Well, it's very simple. I mean, I'm a mathematician. As you run the numbers, the number of people using Bitcoin and the number of transactions, it's escalating tremendously. Um, that's the true value. So while the price is going down, who cares? It's a temporary issue created by uh, artificial pressures. So the true value is going to eventually be based upon usage. And if you track the usage curve, a million dollars by the end of 2020 is, is conservative. On, and simultaneously, keep in mind, all right? 
as more and more people use cryptocurrencies, they flee fiat currencies, which devalues them. So keep in mind, a million dollars in 2020 may not be a million dollars in today's dollars, okay? And so while Bitcoin is rising, the dollar is deflating. So a million dollars in the end of 2020 may only buy you a toothpick. I'm not sure, okay? I hope we won't get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, and the, the last question is that you said million dollars. Is it going to be it's just the jump or is it a permanent price? Cause I, 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 I have no clue. I don't know when it's going to come. But listen, if you apply enough pressure, like if you're blowing up a balloon and you keep on pumping air in, I don't know when it's going to pop, but I can tell you it's going to pop. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.